Thermodynamics, the first law and cycles. Questions to ponder. What is a cyclical process? How is work calculated in a cyclical process? How is the ideal gas law used to solve process problems? And how are the types of processes used in solving problems? Let's first of all look at an isobaric, isochoric process. To understand a cycle, uh, or an isobaric, isochoric cycle, to understand a cycle, a cycle is a thermal process, or is where thermal processes end back up at the same place they started. So if we start at uh, location A here, um, and we have a, a process that takes us to B, then to C, then to D, and then back to A, if we come back to where we were initially, and then we keep repeating that process, that's called a cyclical process. In this particular cycle, we start out at A and we want to go to B. Let's say that we don't know what the temperature is right here at location B, but we know what the uh, volumes are uh, at location uh, A and also location B. We know the volumes. And let's say that we also know what our starting temperature was at position A. That being the case, we could use our um, ideal gas law proportion here and uh, find out what our temperature is that we're looking for, the temperature at location B. Uh, what's nice is because this is an isobaric process from A to B, the pressure remaining the same here, um, the pressures will cancel. And that being the case, since we know the two volumes and the temperature where we started, we could use a little algebra and solve for the temperature at point B. Next, let's say we follow this path from B to C. That's an isochoric uh, process. In that isochoric process, the volume stays constant here. So if the volume stays constant uh, from B to C, we can take our ideal gas law proportion again. The volumes now will cancel. And let's say that we didn't know what the pressure was at point C yet. We didn't know the pressure yet. And uh, so we were trying to find uh, oh, sorry, this pressure at this particular location. Let, let's say we did know the pressure up here to start with. Uh, so if we know the pressure, we know the two uh, temperatures, the only thing, I'm sorry, oh, we don't know what the pressure is here at point C. We know this pressure in these two temperatures. We could solve for this by multiplying both sides by the temperature at point C here. So that's how an isochoric uh, process can help is because it, it allows us to eliminate the equal volumes. If we go to, from point C to point D, we're back to another isobaric uh, process here, constant pressure. The pressures will cancel and we can solve for what we need to find. And finally, from point D to back to point A, we're back to an isochoric process where the volume stays constant and the volumes will cancel and we can solve for our unknown in that particular case using a little algebra. So that's uh, how we can use the ideal gas law to solve for various volumes, temperatures, or pressures in this particular cycle. When you have a, uh, a thermal cycle like this, we can find out what the work, is, work done for each cycle is um, by finding the area within the cycle. So uh, the reason for that is when we go from uh, point A to point B in the uh, isobaric, first isobaric process, the total work done from point A to point B would be the area underneath this whole curve here. That would have been the negative uh, work done to um, uh, increase the volume. But, and then we wouldn't have done any work from B to C. There would be no work done from B to C. From C to D, the work we would have done would have been the area underneath this part of the curve right here. That would have been positive work. And so that positive work would have uh, subtracted away from the original negative work, overall negative work we did here. So we would have this much negative work left. And of course, from D to A, we wouldn't do any work either because there wouldn't be any change in volume. And so the leftover work here was the work from process A to B minus the work from process C to D. Since the bigger the two is negative, the overall work would be negative. 
You can also find it by just finding the area within this loop right here, which would have been the change in uh, pressure here times the change in volume. And we would realize that the work is negative because the top process here went from left to right. The top process uh, was increasing volume. The lower process was decreasing volume, so the top one wins over the bottom one as far as it being negative. So that's one cycle on how you uh, would handle the various problems you'll be um, dealing with there. This next cycle I call trace isos because uh, it has all three of the iso processes in this cycle. Um, let's, uh, we also reversed uh, the cycle here to see how we could do positive work uh, with a cycle. Um, let's start at point A. Uh, our first process from point A to point B, notice that the volume is staying constant, so that is an isochoric process. And uh, that being the case, using our uh, ideal gas law proportion here, the volumes would cancel, and we could solve for the particular unknown uh, in the system using this simple ratio here. Um, the pressure at point B is to the temperature at point B, as the pressure at point A is the temperature at point A. So let's say I knew the two pressures and I didn't know this temperature we could solve for it. Or maybe I knew the two temperatures and the original pressure and I didn't know the final pressure down here. So uh, something we could solve for using that proportion. Next, if we go from B to C here, uh, we notice that that is an isobaric process where the pressure is constant throughout this whole time. That being the case, our pressures would cancel and we would solve for our particular unknown there. Maybe it's the uh, volume we don't know at this location and we knew what that volume was. Um, and uh, so we could solve for this volume, let's say. Um, and then we have our final process from C back to A here. And we go from C back to A. Uh, in this particular case, it's along an isotherm. And so this is an, the temperature staying the same. So this is an isothermic process and the temperatures would cancel and we could solve for whatever unknown we still don't have in the particular problem here. Uh, the work in this system again is the area under or with or within the cycle so the area within the cycle is the work done that's because the original work uh, done here uh, the negative work expanding the volume this rectangle uh, would be negative, but then when we did this work coming back here, the area from C to, uh, C to A would be this, dink, 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 it would be the area all under there. So the leftover area would be the work. And that leftover area, since the process, the greater process is the one decreasing volume here, going that way from C to A, then uh, the work is going to be positive. We're going to eventually compress uh, the, the system here and add internal energy with this positive amount of work. Again, the top cycle uh, uh, in the volume direction, the top cycle, which is decreasing volume, will tell us that the work is positive. And for our last system we're going to look at here, an isothermal adiabatic combination. Um, starting at point A to point B, what we know in this particular cycle here, and then C, uh, B to C and C to D and back to A, this is an isothermic process. Our temperatures are the same and we could solve for an unknown. Now from B to C, this is an adiabatic process where there is no uh, heat. Um, there's no heating, so no heat leaving or entering. Uh, the gas and so um, during this process this is our known that we would use uh, to our advantage. I don't know how that would actually play out but uh, it would play out to your advantage that there's no heat uh, during the, this time exchanged. And then from C to D we're back to an isothermal process uh, along this isotherm and then finally from point D to point A back to an adiabatic uh, process there. 
and that would enclose our cycle. The reason I bring this cycle up is this is a very uh, widely known cycle. This is known as the Carnot cycle, and one that we'll be talking about a lot when we get into the uh, second law of thermodynamics. And uh, this is the most efficient cycle that any thermal cycle can have, a combination of uh, isothermal processes where heat is entering uh, or in this, you know, where heat is entering the system and then where heat is leaving the system uh, on, on these two processes. And this are kind of like inertia carrying the system on and carrying the system back in these adiabatic uh, processes. Notice that uh, the top process here, uh, expanding volume is uh, going is expanding the volume so the overall work would be negative in this case um, in this particular and it would be the area contained within the cycle so those are our three cycles we're going to look at uh, do some of the problems that uh, you were given and and uh, see how all of these processes and understanding uh, the the wet parts are the ISO processes and the adiabatic process and the knowns that you come up from that uh, can help you solve all of these different problems. So hopefully you know what a cyclical process is now that uh, you know how work is calculated in a process uh, or, or uh, what work means, uh, how the ideal gas law is used uh, and the proportional part of that and how the types of processes are useful in solving these problems giving you certain knowns. Scratch's parting idea. And uh, learning is a cyclical process and uh, good luck on your striving for continuous improvement.